Welcome to Truth in History. God's true people, Israel. Revelation of God's plan. Fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Mystery of God shall be finished. Kingdoms become kingdoms of Christ. Truth in History with Charles A. Jennings. Thank you once again for joining me here on Truth in History program as we continue to study the book of Habakkuk. It's a powerful book. It's a little book. It's a neglected book, I think, among many circles. But it has a powerful message that applied to ancient Jerusalem before the destruction of the city by the Babylonians. But it also has a powerful message for America. I mean, the description that it gives of that ancient city, Jerusalem, fits us. I mean, it, it's just like hand in glove. Um, because our wickedness has ascended up to heaven. And God is keeping a good record, an accurate record, as to what's taking place. Well, we, last time we ended in chapter number 2 and verse number 18. And this is ta talking about in verses 15 through 19 is talking about the revelers in our society. See, in, in this land of ours, in America, we have a pleasure, treasure mentality. Hedonism. Hedonism, just pleasure and money and riches. Um, you know, and what's coming from a lot of these churches, the message that's coming from them to a large degree is, God wants you to be happy. Ah, oh, just be happy. You know, neglecting the serious matters. But anyway, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 18, what prophets? The graven image that the maker thereof have graven it. You, you come up with your idol, but what is, what's the prophet? The molten image, the teacher of lies that the maker of his work trusts therein to make dumb idols. Woe unto him that said to the wood, Awake, to the dumb stone arise, it shall teach. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. You build up these idols, the Lord said, gold and silver and wood, but there's no breath in them. It's like the philosophies of today. There's no breath in them. There's no life in them. Zionism, Marxism, humanism, secular humanism, and so-called social justice. There's no life in them. It's all bondage. It comes out of the, the uh, French Revolution, and then it was purported and, and groomed and polished through transcendental meditation and the, the uh, liberal thinking of a lot of American poets in the 1800s. But that's a different subject. But when we go into chapter 3 of Habakkuk, verse 1, it says, A prayer of Habakkuk the prophet upon Shigeonoth. And that word means to cry aloud. He started out, the prophet started out by crying aloud. And he was wondering, Lord, why don't you do something about this evil? Here he is crying aloud again. And he says, O Lord, I have heard thy speech, and it scared me. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 2. Have you ever received a message from God concerning the destruction and judgment of this country, the United States of America, that scared you? 
We need prophets in this land that can hear the voice of God, can see the vision, can make it plain, and tremble at His Word. O Lord, revive Thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years make known. Now I have heard sermons years ago by some famous evangelists and high-powered preachers talking about this verse and applying it to, Lord, revive Thy work in the midst of the years. In other words, You sent us a great revival back in in the uh, First Great Awakening, the Second Great Awakening, the Pentecostal Awakening of 1900, and the the Welsh Revival of 1905 and 04 and 05 in Wales. Lord, renew that. You know, revive thy work in the midst of the years. That's not what the prophet is talking about. What the prophet is talking about is that the judgments that you sent to ancient Israel, northern house, the judgment that you sent to other nations because of their sins, I want you to renew that. And I want you to renew that in the midst of the years. In other words, in your timing, your appointed time, I want your judgment to come. But the last part of that verse says, but in your fierce wrath, I want you to remember mercy. Don't overkill. Don't kill everybody, Lord. There are some righteous people in the land. Because, you see, He said earlier that the proud, the proud soul is not upright, but there are some that's going to live by faith, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So therefore, Lord, in your wrath upon America, and I say this to you, folks, out of my heart, We have never seen anything yet in the way of wrath, God's wrath. Oh, there's fires in California and floods and hurricanes and tornadoes and et cetera. But there comes a point. There comes a point in time when our sin is going to be equal to the sin of ancient Jerusalem. And killing of the innocent, infanticide, aborticide, like the new law from the state of New York recently. And they stood up and cheered. What are these people? Are they morons? Don't they understand what they just did? legalize the killing of children, human sacrifice? Then they lit up the Freedom Tower, or whatever they call that thing in New York, pink, women power, denoting the power of women that's now taking over in America, in Congress, in the state houses, in the churches. But our sin of America in human sacrifice, commonly called the right of choice. They want to put that mildly, the right of choice. It says, this is what, this is what the, the sin of America is going to be equal to. And also, For the innocent blood that he shed, for he filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, which the Lord would not pardon. There comes a point of no return. The mercy of God has come to an end on a nation. But Habakkuk the prophet is saying, Lord, in your wrath, 
remember mercy. Then it says this, in beginning in verse number 3, 3 through 15, is talking about the prophet recalls what God did for Israel coming out of Egypt. When God, God came from Teman and the Holy One from Mount Paran, Selah. I don't have time to comment on every one of these verses. His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of His praise, and His brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of His hand. In other words, authority. And there was the hiding of His power, what God did for Israel in the, in the destruction of the Egyptian army and so forth. Before Him went the pestilence, and burning coals went forth at His feet. He stood and measured the earth. He beheld and drove asunder the nations. Read what the Lord did to the other nations when He was delivering His people in that 40-year wandering in the wilderness. And the everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills, in other words, other nations, they bowed. His ways are everlasting. And He goes on to describe they, he went on, the prophet went on to describe in pictorial language what God did to other people in delivering Israel out of Egypt and bringing them into the land of Canaan, the promised land. Then we, we come down to verse number 13. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, even for the salvation with thine anointed. Thou woundest the he head out of the house of the wicked by discovering the foundation unto the neck. Selah. He's saying, Lord, you destroyed other nations for your people, your anointed. Now, in application to America today, the Lord said that He raised up the Chaldeans as an adversary. He raised up our adversaries also. You can say, well, we've got a problem with China. We've got a problem with North Korea. We've got a problem with uh, Russia. Maybe we do. I don't doubt that. Do you trust them? It'd be a risk to trust any of that trilogy. But the Lord raised them up to punish us because we are a covenant nation. We are a covenant people. I've said it before. You may not agree, but the Anglo-Saxon, Germanic, Scandinavian people are the covenant people of Israel, the true genetic people of Israel. And they established this nation, England and, and other nations, Northwestern Europe, South Africa, Australia. But look at our wickedness. And God raised up enemies to punish us for our sins. And He's going to punish us in a measure that He has never punished a nation before to that extent to this size. He's got a plan. But the prophet said, Lord, in wrath, in your wrath, I want you to remember mercy. Mercy. Back to the book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 16. The prophet is speaking again, and when he said, when I heard, my belly trembled. My lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered into my bones, and I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble, that I might find a secure hiding place in the day of God's wrath. 
when he cometh up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. And then he says this, the prophet rejoices. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vine. The labor of the olive shall fail. The fields shall yield no, no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. When everything looks bleak, when everything looks black. Verse number 18, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. There will be a hiding place, and it's in Christ and Christ alone. When destruction comes to this nation, now, I am hearing, and I'm sure that you're, you are hearing, and for the last several years, people having dreams or visions of destruction coming to North America, especially to the United States, and uh, destruction here and here and here and here and here, and among them, they all combine to make one big fire, one big destructive element. But remember, God has a place to protect His own. He has a place to protect His own. He will remember mercy. And number two, there will be a people that will be able to rejoice in the Lord. The Bible tells us in the book of Revelation that the prophets, the prophets rejoiced and they sang praises when they saw Babylon fall. Wow! Can we do that now? Now the last verse of the book of Habakkuk, The Lord God is my strength, and He will make my feet like hinds feet, and He will make me to walk upon mine high places. And then he says to the chief singer on my stringed instruments. In other words, let's sing this as a song, though destruction be all around us. There is a hiding place. Let's sing the song. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. In Psalm 73, the, the psalmist writes a magnificent word and description of the wicked. And I'm not going to read it all, but in Psalm 73, he says in verse number 2, But as for me, my feet were almost gone, my steps were well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. There's no bands in their death, there's no, there's no hurt, their strength is firm, they're prospering. And he goes through this description all the way down through verse 14, and then in verse number 15 he says, If I say, I will speak thus, behold, I, shall, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then I understood the end of the wicked. So we're going to look at this from God's standpoint. You know, let's stop looking at this world system from just man's standpoint. In other words, there's reason to hope, but that hope is only in the God of our salvation. 
in Matthew chapter 13, the parable of the tares and the wheat. And this is what Jesus said. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and His disciples came unto Him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the wheat. This is Matthew 13, 36. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the, wick of the kingdom. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. You notice He didn't say the word of the kingdom. He said children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be at the end of the age, or the world. And then the Son of Man shall send forth His angels, and they shall gather out of His kingdom all things that offend, and them that do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their Father. What element was removed? It was the wicked. So don't expect a rapture to take away all the good and just leave this planet over to the devil. It's not going to happen that way. When Jesus Christ comes and He sends His angels, He's going to remove the wicked first. And He said, that the wicked, the wicked are the children, or the tares are the children of the wicked one. Children, the offspring, the seed line of the wicked one. A lot of people don't believe that there is an evil seed in the earth. But there is an evil seed of people in the earth. They can't do good. They don't want to do good. Their heart is perverted from birth, and they're going to continually to do, to do evil. And the Lord knows who they are. And He says, they were sowed, they were sown by the devil. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. And Jesus in John chapter 8 talks about a people that are evil. And He said, Ye are of your father the devil. What did He mean by that? Now, I know that's pretty stout language. And I know a th years and years ago a theologian, he said, well, that's not what that means. Well, somebody needed to take a penknife and start cutting those scriptures out of his Bible and throwing them away and just leave him the good and the pleasant and that which pleases the ears of the masses. There must come a time in this nation when God raises up a company of prophets. I mean a company of prophets that will speak the word without fear or favor. We're in trouble. Our leadership is causing Israel to sin just like Ahab caused Israel to sin in the Old Testament. But this is what it says in Isaiah chapter 56 beginning with verse number 10, talking about the watchman. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are as dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Why aren't these big ministries, these rich ministries, charismatic and otherwise, why aren't they crying out against the evil of our land? Well, you know and I know. They will lose noses and nickels. They will lose their status. They will lose their popularity. And these networks would cut them off. 
Isaiah 56, 11, Yea, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. Shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, every one for his gain. You know, it's, send me more money. Send me this. Send me that. Send me your car payment. Send me money equal to your mortgage payment, and you'll be blessed from on high. They seek their own gain, and they live like kings, and keep pulling from the, the suckers of the masses. Verse 12, Come ye, say they, I will fetch wine. We will fill ourselves with strong drink, and tomorrow shall be as today and much more abundant. Fat cats in the pulpit. We need prophets of God. We need a Habakkuk to come and preach to us. We need an Isaiah. We need a Jeremiah that will stand up just like he did in ancient Jerusalem and say, Why have ye changed your gods, America? Why have you forsaken the Lord God of Israel, the God of the Bible, Jesus Christ, and, and gone and sought the idols and sacrificed your children to Molech and thrown them to the God of Baal in the valley of Hanam, and where the drummers are out there beating the drums so that no one will hear the cry of the innocent. God help us. I pray that you have been challenged with, these, with this series from Habakkuk. I pray that you will be stirred. Go to your pastor. Tell him. Read the book of Habakkuk. Let it stir in him. Judgment is coming, folks. If you would like to receive some brochures while they last, free brochures from our ministry, just write to us, call us, send us an email. Also our magazine, free of charge. And go to our website, go to YouTube. You can see a lot more sermons from the TV program and also from uh, the pulpit at a local location. And I'm hope, I hope that you're stirred because Jesus Christ is coming back. And He's coming back in flaming fire to devour the wicked and to save the righteous. God bless you. For any material offered on this program or to be a part of this ministry, please write or call today. We thank you, and may God bless you for your response to this end-time ministry, Truth in History, where the Word of God is not found.